Day 4 Physics, quick review of scientific notation, sig figs, and then a discussion of order of magnitude. What I'd like you to do is to try to take these seven problems here, right here, um, and then just write in this space right here the scientific notation for the given number on the left. So take this one. I'll do the first one for you. The first one would be 5.481, retaining all four sig figs. There's four sig figs there. You don't count the zeros at the end of that non-decimal number. But that should say 5.481 times 10 to the 8th meters. So see if you can do the other seven problems, the other six problems, write them in scientific notation and tell me how many sig figs they are. there are. Here are all the answers. A couple of notes. In the second one, the leading zeros do not count. The three zeros here at the beginning do not count. There are three sig figs there. These three zeros do count. They're in the middle of a number. This zero does count. And number four, this n zero would not be written there unless it was significant. So that's why there's six sig figs there. And you must include that in your representation of the scientific no notated number right here. Here, the first three zeros don't count. The last two zeros do count. Here, the last three zeros do count. Another special thing about this problem is that this is really already in scientific notation. You would not need to put times 10 to the 0 power, but times 10 to the 0 is 1. But I just want to show you, you can write it this way. 10 to the 0 power is the factor of 10 that you would put in here if you had to put it in there. That's seven sig figs, however. And the final one, the zero in the middle counts, the first two zeros do not count. You can see I'm always including the units here on the right. And those are your solutions. Now, magnitude. Let me go through this, and I'll explain more as I go along. But in number one, the magnitude most of the time, or say half the time, is going to be this number right here this power of 10 in scientific notation. However, if the first number over here in front, it's a 5, it's a 5 or bigger, you bump the factor of 10 up by 1. So in other words, instead of 10 to the 8th, you would say that that's 10 to the 9th. So the magnitude, order of magnitude is 10 to the 9th meters. Number 2, and number 2, that this number in the front here is a 4, it's less than 5, so you stick with a 10 and negative 4th as your magnitude. 10 and negative 4th. Negative 4 is your magnitude, and that is in centimeters. I'm going to pause and I'll fill the rest in and explain the rest. Here are the solutions. Once again, in number three, number three, here's our scientific notation, but the first number is a seven, so our magnitude would be this here times another ten, or in other words, bump that up by one, that's why it's ten squared or a hundred. The magnitude of this number, you know, it's a, the number is 77 originally. It's close to 100. Basically, you're rounding off to the nearest power of 10. That value right there is around about 100. It's, magnitude is around 100 centimeters. Number of, uh, 4 here is 10, 10 to the 4th because the 6 is bigger than 5. You add 1 to the 4 over here to get 10 to the 5th. In other words, this number here is close to 100,000 to a, an approximate power of 10. This one here, the first number is less than 5, so you just leave this as the magnitude, 10 to the negative 3rd. Same thing, number 6, that's a 4, it's less than 5, so you leave this as 10 to the 0 as your magnitude which would be a 1. And the final one, be careful, the 8 is bigger than 5, so we're going to go up 1 power of 10 from this factor right here. If you go up 1 from negative 2, you get to negative 1. So the magnitude there is 10 to the negative 1. Watch out for those. So comparing numbers is a very 
important life skill. This is done in all aspects of life, like sports. You know, some running back carries 7.7 yards per carry, and somebody else, another running back, can do 5.3 yards per carry. You can figure out how many more yards per carry the, the, the better running back is, and he might get paid more, or he might be somebody you want on your fantasy football team or whatever. When you're looking to buy gas and you know it's 12 cents per gallon less over at gas station X versus the station that's by your house, that's a comparison, absolute difference between the price of gas. Stock prices go up by a certain percent, down by a certain percent. Sales prices for clothing or purchased items you're going to purchase. But here we go. Let's say you did a lab. And you have two measurements. You measured 15.8, another lab group measured 12.3. So the absolute difference is you just you could just say, and we can do this one in our head, 15.8 minus 12.3. You could say 15.8 is 3.5 meters farther or longer or bigger farther than. 12.3. So nothing earth-shattering about that. Or you can even say it the other way around. That's 12.3 meters. I, you know, shame on me. Let me put the units in there. 15.8 meters is 3.5 meters further than 12.3 meters. In a lab report, you want to put things in grammatical form, and that's one grammatical form of that. Or you could say 12.3 meters is 3.5 meters less than or shorter than 15.8 meters. Now, we do that every so often in labs, but a lot of times in labs we'll do percent difference. Some people call it percent error. I don't like that because that implies that there's an absolute error. But let's us not assume that there's an error. Just say it's a percent difference. Now, I have the equation up here. Let me write it down. So percent difference, there's the equ equation up there in, circled in blue. I've summarized it a little bit. The percent difference between any two numbers... In general, you take your final reading minus the initial reading and divide by the initial reading, or sometimes we call the reference number or the accurate number, if that's the accurate value. Then you multiply by 100 to put it in percent form. So, for example, in this case, if you're doing a lab and some other group or there was a reference number of 12.3 and your lab group got 15.8, you're a little high. What percent high is this number? Or what percent higher is 15.8? than 12.3. Well, bottom line is, it would look like this. So I have this all worked out. <clears throat> so you'd have the absolute value of 15.8 minus 12.3, which is the 3.5, and that'll be two sig figs, divided by the 12.3 times 100, round off the two sig figs, 28%. So you would say in your lab report, our value, 15.8 meters, is 28% higher or larger than the 12.3 meters. Now let's say somebody else had 15.8 and you measured 12.3. So your number is low. How much lower is 12.3 compared to 15.8? And the hint is it's not 28%. It's less than 28%. You can check the math on this, but it looks like the following. So in black here I have it. You have the absolute value of 12.3 minus 15.8. And by the way, when you subtract that, you get a negative number, which is really indicating that your number is low. But taking the absolute value for percentages, typically, that gives you a positive 3.5 divided by the 15.8, which is the starting number, gives you a loss or a lower, smaller number by 22%. In other words, you would say 12.3 meters is 22% lower than expected, or than the 15.8 meters. In some books, you could just say it's a negative 22%. It's a drop of 22%. So here's an example with, say, a dress that's on sale from $655 down to $451. The absolute difference is you could say, well, I saved $204 on a dress. Or you could say there is a $204 discount on the dress, or $204 that I saved on the dress. You could say it any way like that. But the percent, you take the final, the 451, minus the original. Once again, that'll be a negative number, but absolute value makes it positive again. If you didn't have the absolute value, you could say you have a 31% price drop. 
or there was a discount of 31%. Once again, you're dividing by the original number here, the 655, to arrive at that 31% discount price. That's what the, you could say the dress is on sale with, for a 31% discount. Sometimes you have a couple of numbers that vary greatly. So comparing or finding their absolute difference doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Even their percent difference is so far, they're so far different, it makes no sense to say, well, this number is like 2,000% bigger than that number. It, it's better to compare them like this by their orders of magnitude. Essentially, what you're doing is generically dividing the big number by the small number. For example, if I take the 5.72 here times 10 to the 9th and divide it by the small number, 3.66 times 10 to the 4th, and you can do that yourself. If I do it on my calculator, I get 1.56 times 10 to the 5th. What's important here is the 10 to the 5th. In other words, the bigger number is bigger by that factor, that multiplier, by 1.56 times 10 to the 5th. But the 1.56 isn't even that important. What's important here is this 10 to the 5th. I could say that, and if I put this in generic terms to kind of simplify, the big number here, the big number here is roughly equal to, the big number being the 5.2, 10 to the 5th, or 100,000 times, the smaller number. This is not the conventional way to, to really write numbers, like big and small, but the important thing here is the 10 to the 5th. The big number is 10 to the 5th times, 100,000 times bigger than the smaller number. I mean, I could actually put those numbers in there, but I'm just looking for the comparison. Same thing over here on the right-hand side. What's the bigger number? The bigger number is the 1.72 times 10 to the negative 14th, which is bigger by probably around 15 orders of magnitude, roughly 10 to the 15th. I can already see that. Let's see if it's really going to come out here. Negative 29 because there's 15 orders of magnitude between 14 and 29. And indeed, when I divide that, I get 8.11. times 10 to the 14th. Looks like it's a uh, multiplier of 10 to the 14th. However, this 8.11 really has a magnitude of 10 to the 15th because the 8 is bigger than a 5. So in other words, the, the order of magnitude of this number that I'm looking at right now, when I divided these two numbers, the order of magnitude of this number is 10 to the 15th. Or once again, all right, the big number here, the big number here, the the 1.72 times 10 to the negative 14th, the big number is roughly equal to uh, 10 to the 15th orders of magnitude times the smaller number. In a, an official report, you would notate that a little bit better, but I'm just looking for comparisons here for now in the notes. And I'll take that in your homework. A 10 to the 15th is, you know, a 1 with 15 zeros. It's like a billion gigas or something like that, or let's see, a million, because a giga, a, a million is 10 to the 6th, a billion is 10 to the ninth. so it's a million billions, that's how much bigger it is, the big number here, so comparing two numbers that are vastly different, you look at their order of magnitude comparison.